Hello everyone. In tonight's video, first I want to show you where am I at with the giveaway box. So I hope you will like these flies, whoever gets them. I have some nine more flies to finish and that would be it. So I hope whoever gets those will enjoy. Hello everyone, uh, in tonight's video the theme will be pinch and loop. So I'll start a hook with my threads. I'm using this thick one and the uh, orange just for, for visibility sake. So I'm going to go to the end of my fly. And let's just assume that I want to attach something at the end of my fly. And I don't know many things, so I'm a beginner now. So if you want to attach something that's soft, let's say peacock barb, and you apply too much pressure, it will rotate on you. So it will push away your material, rotate around the hook. I mean, after a couple of reps, you will maybe catch it. But then by that time, you will have bulk here and it's like annoying. Now, what you need to do is to put your thread up, open your fingers slightly without moving them back and forth. So because you don't want to for example if you're attaching tails here you don't want to change the length so you open finger slightly just enough to pinch put your thread under and then let me just show you something here is the spot where your thread is going up this way so that is the exact spot you want to place your thread when you go around the hook shank. And then pinch everything together. And then just pull. And your material is secured exactly where you want it. It's that simple. That's called pinch and loop. Now, many materials, because of the thread torque, will rotate on you. So what you want to do is... Let me just try to demonstrate that now again. So I'll just take again peacock barb and I'll place it on the top of the hook shank here, like so. And then I'll do pinch loop. So I create I'm creating a loop and I press down. And if I pull much more, look what's happening. Peacock barb is rotating on myself. You can prevent that from happening if you do a couple of things. One of them, the most simple one, well, it's not the most simple one, but it's the most common one. So let's go again, pinch, loop, and look at this. Place the thread underneath. So the thread that's going up and the thread that, that is going down, they are meeting at the same spot. So I'm gonna hold to my on my two fingers here and pinch really hard so my fingers get white and then squeeze and, and pull on thread at the same time so until I reach my max now it's not rotating anymore or it's rotating very slightly much better approach would be this you place the the barb on the top of the hook shank open your finger slightly let the thread go down and then pull up again and now squeeze with your fingers that's a must and then pull very hard pull 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 and then that's it your barb is on the top you proceed towards the front doing the same upward motion upward tightening of thread so it doesn't rotate on you see instead of pushing the barb with my thread like so and pushing and pushing and pushing I'll do something else so on the center up no pressure up no pressure up no pressure up up and so on and so on and so on so let's do it one more time and then let's tie a real fly So place material where you want it, 
put your thread up so your thread is vertical over here and it doesn't allow your material to go towards you so you need your finger to prevent material to for from going to the other side but you also need to open a finger a little bit so squeeze everything then put your thread beneath exactly where this thread is going up making a loop this thread going from up to down has to meet it and then pull up and then just proceed and tighten in the upward motion and that would be it very simple technique now let's just apply it into some fly if you like so let's see what materials I need for this little bump that I'm, that I'm going to tie here cookie size 14 I'm calling it bump because this is 3.5 millimeter bead so it's on the large size for this one but you can use even 4 or even of course less than 3.5 uh, it's up to you and it's more or less up the place where you want intend to fish this fly uh, the thread is 8 through 0 it can be flattened which is very important for me the body is going to be pheasant tail barb ribbing is going to be gold wire because I don't have copper at the moment I would I would have used copper because of the bead but it's not important for fishing so I don't care much uh, for the dubbing I'm going to use just some ice dubbing in purple producer I think it's much better than any branded one so Royal CC or whatever you read this uh, Chinese brand the the fibers are very fine and it, it dubs so easily it's like pure joy to work with this dubbing and they're not paying me for this so yeah that's just my opinion uh, I'm going to start the fly with reverse gem hitch because I want to save on one thread layer I'm just showing you this I'm not I don't need to save this one here so two three and now I can pull the tag towards the front secure it and look how beautifully flat the, this thread is Move this away. Now, first material I'm going to attach is wire, and I'm going to attach it on the far side. For the wire attachment, you just need to uh, use less tension on the thread. That's it. But you still have tension because it's stiff stiff material and it's very easy to tie in wherever you want it now for the pheasant tail barb on the other hand uh, my favorite way to, to tie with it would be pinch and loop exactly what we were talking about in the introduction but before we do that let's take some five or six barbs and make them stand perpendicular to the rakes of the feather like so and then by holding firmly into those two fingers just pull the rakes away and when you go up your tips are perfectly aligned that's just a nice neat little trick I'm going to counter spin the bobbin holder uh, because I want thread to jump into my fingers and I want to make thread thinner that's my main reason here so more or less uh, body length so how much thread you see here that's the length of my tail more or less now with twisted thread go between your fingers and then with this loop con like create this loop connect the loop at the exact place where the thread goes up and the thread goes down they meet at the bottom so pull upwards so it doesn't rotate on you make one more turn and then go in front at this point you can flatten the thread okay you can overlap thread slightly maybe make a little bit of taper and I'm going to make a little bit of taper because I like it in pheasant tails not very not necessary but I even like them fat 
because those stone climbers that I think that pheasant tail is imitating well if you make a really fat like lead well some some kind of wire for the for the weight weighted body you can create like half of it push it into the tungsten and then make that abrupt taper that will imitate stone climbers I think that's very cool but I just create a slight taper over here. Now something that I started doing recently, just a couple of days ago to be exact, would be using of this. It's a bobbin holder. I'm gonna pull it some like five, six centimeters away from my hook, make it tight so it doesn't rotate on me. And then with without manipulating those barbs too much. So those barbs I want to wrap in the opposite direction than the thread. So I'll catch catch them by the tips. Well, buttons, not tips here. Okay. And then I'll just put the thread over the bobbin holder. And now I'll spin barbs nicely. And as you can see, all those micro barbules are going to stick out, make beautiful pheasant tail body. Okay, and because they, these barbs are so short, I'm able to manipulate it with my bobbin now, change hands if I need, so I can catch it. I need to make one wrap like this, and then one in front, and sometimes like now, I make one more and one in front, or two in front. These are locking. This is how I lock this material. I cut it close with my scissors. And it's time to use this wire. And for wire, I will use bobbin holder again. So place the, th the thread over the bobbin holder. And then now, because wire needs oh yes i need to explain to you why i created why i put wire on the far side so if it was on the near side my first wrap would be from here over the tails i don't want that yeah so i want to go this way and i'm using rotation again so you can place even wraps for new guys this may be useful i'm completely used to do this without a bobbin holder so it takes time for me to do it to be honest but for some things it may be useful I think so one two three reps helicopter the wire okay just want to move this little piece of wire and hide it because it can cut your thread sometimes this would be it now let's see how to find this dubbing is so I'm going to use half of this amount let me remove the half so I'm using this apply it on the thread in a very thin compact dubbing noodle Okay, now, it's going to be blurry, but you will be able to see that it is very, very nice and compact. And that's why I like this UV. Because if you take, for example, a hairline ice dubbing, it's not nearly as fine lately. Before it was perfect and I loved it, but now it's suitable for bigger nymphs. Now I'm going to use hand whip finish knot. Oops, my rough hands, I just frayed the thread. So rough hands are not friend of your thread. This is it. I slide down the thread. I use the bead as a leading edge to slide down the thread and align those wraps and hide it under the dubbing over here. So you need, I don't have big need to um, do a whip, hidden whip finish knot for this one. So guys, and this would be a Frenchie, one of my favorite variations of pheasant tail. 
it's super simple as you can see you can tie this when you get used to it in like two maybe three minutes my fast time would be two minutes and I did a video a long time ago where I tied 10 pheasant tails in 20 minutes so yeah it's two minutes and yeah there is no time exact time where I would use this one I would use it like whenever as a search pattern and just make sure that your tungsten bead is appropriate to the speed and depth of water that's more or less the most important thing that you have to take care of when you're fishing pheasant tails uh, 14 16 would be maybe universal so this is 14 looks rather rather small compared to my thumb and yeah that would be it thank you very much i hope you learned something new in this video i uh, hope i i helped someone new and hope to see you next week again.